we've got a deal in the worst possible scenario. It's fallen apart after conditions have been removed, just before possession. So what happens to the deposits? Not an easy topic to cover off in a two, two and a half minute blog, but I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it a shot. Well, a couple of things. Firstly, if it's the buyer who has breached the contract, then uh, in most cases that money is forfeited deposits and the money goes to the seller. Does the seller pay any of it in commissions? Yes, in some cases the seller can pay some of it in commissions depending on the listing contract and how it was uh, created between the brokerage and the seller. The other scenario might be where the seller has breached the contract. So where do the deposits go at that point? Well, if it's clear that the seller has breached the contract and is backing out, then the deposits uh, are rightfully uh, returned back to the purchaser. Does the purchaser have recourse? Yes, the purchaser continues to have recourse. Legal matters, got to get lawyers involved. In, in most cases though, it's not clear and there's an argument about who's breached the contract um, and where the deposits go, are going to go. In those cases, it's up to the broker of the listing brokerage or the, the broker who, um, who uh, owns the listing brokerage to make a final decision on whether or not the deposits are forfeited to the seller or given back to the buyer. Now, in some cases, that decision is very difficult to make. Um, if there is a waiver and a release by all parties, great, the decision's been made, no, no issues. But if there isn't, it's incumbent on the broker to make that decision. Short of which, he can pay the money into courts, but that's not recommended by RICA. So what you want to do is have a broker who's able to make those decisions, and those decisions do have to be made. Once again, make our team your team. Hey, hey, hey.